We are talking about spirituality and the, the leading of a spiritual life. Do you believe, Your Holiness, that it is more difficult today, these days, to lead a spiritual life? I do, firstly, uh, in what sense spirituality? Spirituality, in a sense, uh, some religious uh, belief and devotion. Then, uh, I think, a different question. Uh, on the other hand, the spiritual, spirituality means something meaningful life or truthful, peaceful, uh, and I think I should say more realistic, uh, and not only concerned about external facilities, material uh, comfort, but also taking uh, concern or taking sort of seriously about our inner value. That I consider another kind of spirituality. I think that today's world I think very much need. You talk a lot about and you've written about the inner world. Yes. What do you mean by the inner world? I think simple, simple sort of word, simple way to explain. Affection. The it's just sort of human expression, or even animal. Uh, that, I think, top most precious to us. But that affection cannot be produced by machine. Or affection cannot buy, uh, cannot buy with dollar. So affection is something our inner, I say, quality. So, human being, as a living being, and moreover, we are social animal. Therefore, in order to be happier human being, affection is most important factor. Is so, a so sometimes I feel in modern society, we neglect about this inner value, and then we just uh, seeking comfort from external means. So that way, even some of my friend, billionaire, very rich, but as a person, very unhappy person. Why? Not due to lack of external or material facility, or their fame, or, or their power, or their sort of privileges, but because lack of inner value. This is my feeling. It is easier to get external satisfaction than inner value, though, isn't it? That's the I, I think the uh, answer will be both yes and no. Yes, uh, sometimes the external things a bit easier. The internal uh, development or internal richness, you need more effort through training of mind uh, so, it is in a way more difficult, but in a way, the inner value, all the potential of inner value uh, from the birth, we already have. So, there is no need any sort of what's the, uh, what's the, any effort. Some, sometimes, in order to gain some material benefit, you have to show more smile, you have to, sh uh, you have to speak nice words, like that. But in the development, no need that kind of thing. Can we all, already here? Can we all learn how to get that inner contentment, inner satisfaction? You have been meditating and praying for all your life. Can the rest of us get anywhere close to that? The basic human value is concerned. I think everyone has the same potential, I think the same opportunity, I feel. And uh, in fact, now we, I think six, more than six billion human beings, everyone 
come from from mother's womb and then through mother's milk we grown up under mother or someone else affection under that we grown up we survived today because of that affection i think at that time one week without affection we die so that's the way our lives begin start so today i think no matter how you say one individual cruel type but still there is seed or potential of that affection the reason even that cruel person appreciate if someone shows affection so therefore i feel we all all human being and some extent even animal have the same potential now thing is when we are young these basic human potentials are quite sort of what's it a uh, uh, i mean quite fresh then we will grown up i think maybe you see you and me both maybe our uh, in- intelligence our brain becoming more sophisticated too sophisticated oh uh, then sometimes we neglect about our basic value maybe do, wow do you think <laughs> do you think we become too sophisticated for our own good i think sophistication mind itself i think nothing wrong but only sophisticated mind without other uh, mental value then it becomes sometimes destructive so the further sort of the development further progress in our brain meantime our warm heartedness our sense of what is it a sense of concern of other respect or recognition others right then uh, and more warmth warm heartedness now these are i think the force which uh, which becoming something like i think uh, counter balance the our intelligence will uh, sh- not go wrong direction so that's my view you know so the modern education i feel sometimes i think lacking i feel the about the education of inner secular spirituality secular spirituality yes. uh, not religious spirituality that's right. that's right which is more important secular no so, question so you can have spirituality without religiosity that's right that's important i think that when i say spirituality i meant that not religion religious spirituality with religious faith it's to certain people including myself but humanity in general i don't know uh, realistically speaking i think 6 billion entire human being uh, try to be, try to become believer i think that's difficult there's many many non believers there they're also part of humanity so what spirituality are we talking about without religion what spirituality is that goodness of human being like you see there uh, by nature i have the potential when i saw you see another human being suffering i have the feeling want to share want to help at, at least even cannot help practically i want to share mentally their problem these are human nature even animal one animal die or wounded the other sort of same same, same species of animal or their group you see they sometimes what what called licking that is the showing of affection one another let me ask so that's the basic our basic nature our basic value do you uh, i i hesitate to ask this question oh, okay <laughs> No need any hesitation. <laughs> Do you get angry? Oh yes. Really? Oh yes. If you ask some stupid question, I may lose my anger. Oh. <laughs> But I, people never think of the Dalai Lama as getting angry. Ah. Uh, we think of That's nonsense. Think, I'm a human being. Oh, 
I am the same human being. Of course, uh, I think I, I spent a lot of sort of time or energy uh, trying to, uh, to, to shaping my mind, try to less these negative emotions such as anger, hatred, jealousy, and try to strengthening, try to uh, increase positive emotions such as patience or compassion, uh, like that. In spite of that, the, of course, the get rid of these all negative emotions, not at all easy. I am Buddhist. From the Buddhist viewpoint, it may take eons, it may take several lives. So, but, but, but I think according to my own little experience, if you make effort, uh, use our intelligence, uh, uh, year by year, or decade by decade, you can see some improvement. Now, today is my mental state. Yeah. Compare, uh, say, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, today, I think, hopefully, at least hopefully, I think my mental state is much better. So that's, I, I believe, the result of my practice. But still, I'm a human being. I'm a normal human being. No, no, no. Therefore, no, no, no. therefore no, I'll, I'll, oh, I, I think I prefer, I should have angry or anger in order to show I'm a normal human being. <laughs> Let us just pause for one moment. Oh. Just pause. One thing I want to talk about, it, you spend a lot of time thinking about death. Yes. Most of us know it is going to happen, and we would prefer not to think about it. Huh. That's an unrealistic attitude. Because sooner or later, that will come. That is part of our life. So if you ignore that, it is unrealistic. You don't ignore it, but why, why dwell on it? Why plan for it? Why think about it? Why, why wish to experience the emotion before it arrives? The reason is, uh, even so some sort of problem, some tragedy, if you, uh, if you have the sort of knowledge, oh, that kind of tragedy will come, then you will prepare for it. So the actual tragedy come because you already prepared out of awareness of that. So much easier to face it. Totally unprepared, totally unexpected. Then something happened. Then you really face a lot of chaos. So similarly, the death. Right from the beginning, accept it. Sooner or later it will come. It's a part of my life. But you don't want then, it. To, but you don't want it to happen. Then, soon. when actual death come, of course I do not want to die. <laughs> but uh, whether I like it or not, it will come. So it is better mentally or emotionally accept it. As another reality it will come. So then think more. What will happen? It's much better. Then you see already prepared. So actual death come much easier to handle. If you totally unprepared, totally sort of ignore that, then once that one one day doctors say now there's no way to cure your illness or something, then you totally collapse. In your long life, with its many trials and tribulations, did you or have you ever had a moment? doubt that you are the reincarnation, that you are the Dalai Lama, I never thought, hey, up, they got it wrong. They got <laughs> the wrong man all those years ago. Uh, um, now, here, yeah, even uh, public, publicly, uh, many cases, I just express, uh, uh, I'm not uh, uh, the true 
true, true or the same being of previous Dalai Lama. Uh, so the, uh, but uh, if you ask me, I'm, am I Dalai Lama? I will say yes. Uh, there's no, 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 no doubt. But the accept, acceptance of being Dalai Lama not necessarily accepted I'm same being of the previous Dalai Lamas. Right. No. Now you need some you see, explanation. The, the reincarnation, uh, not necessarily same being, but a being who have like same quality, same potential, who can carry the task which started by previous Dalai Lama, then that being can be something like replacement of the uh, previous Dalai Lama's sort of seed. And so I believe I'm that kind of reincarnation. Say, you see, the second Dalai Lama, he himself, you see, clearly demonstrated he, he is, he was, I think, the, uh, the rebirth of previous Dalai Lama. He himself accepted. But my case, I never, I never said that. I don't believe that. My spiritual qualification compared to the previous Dalai Lama, my case is much, much worse. <laughs> so so, you, so you, I think if I, uh, 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 because you see, the spiritual inner experience will never degenerate. So therefore, that is the main reason I'm not the same being of the previous Dalai Lama. <laughs> but you think you're the right man for the job? I think so. <laughs> now, more than 70 years, I think, I think, I prove it. <laughs> and, and anyway, it's a bit late, if anybody thought otherwise. Um, Your Holiness, you, you are very keen that there is scientific research into the foundations and the, the various aspects of Buddhism, to, uh, uh, and the, the, you, have, you have promoted scientific research, haven't you, into, uh, into your beliefs. You believe that, you sh that some of these things should be tested. Why is that? Uh, my close contact or discussion with many scientists in different fields of science uh, I think mainly uh, not seeking some kind of proof, some of Buddhist doctrine from science, not that way. Uh, I feel certain Buddhist concept, I think beyond the scientific sort of means, you cannot prove by up to date scientific way, difficult. So I'm I'm not you see, thinking that way, uh, but you see the, uh, some, I think there are, as we already see, uh, touched the internal and external. So modern science up to now, they carry much investigation, experiment on external world. Compare Buddhism, the scientific research, much more deeper. So, as a Buddhist, it is immensely useful to learn what science, science, and science found about matters, about black seas, or these things. Uh, now, modern science now gradually uh, come closer about human emotion, human mind, uh, uh, with the sort of uh, research work about brain. Now here, Buddhist explanation, or ancient Indian thought, a lot of explanation about mind or emotion. Here, scientists can learn or can find some 
you can I mean, useful cooperate with ancient Indian thought. So now here, mutual benefit. We get much benefit that from explanation about external things, matters like particles or quantum physics and quarks. Now these are modern physics really have, I think, wonderful knowledge. And also about brain, wonderful knowledge. But as far as emotion, different kind of emotion, minds, they are uh, Eastern, ancient Indian thought, I think. But why, great, why do you great want... potential to offer, to help. So some kind of uh, work together about human mind, about human emotion, and how to, also how to tackle some of these destructive emotions. Now here, I think the, my contact or our work with scientists seems uh, uh, positive or, or good result, good result up to now. Let us bring matters up to date. Mm. Let us talk about China. Mm. Let us talk about Tibet. How do you how do you stop yourself from anger, from fury, from grief? Well, you have grief, but for, for, from just sheer raw emotion over what you say and what you believe has been done to your country. How do you do that? Because it must be, it must try even your patience. Oh, I think basically our mind trained according to sort of Buddhist concept. So Buddhist concept, one, I, I think basically I feel the also knowledge or the uh, knowing the fact is the key thing. So the uh, awareness about fact, even political or national struggle or freedom struggle, in this field also, you see, key thing is awareness about fact. Then, accordingly, you act. So your approach becoming more realistic. So. Uh, sometimes uh, our today's sort of our tragedy or suffering due to our negligence of previous generations, past generations. So they've already done these, oh, I would say the uh, tragedies, causes, conditions, already done. No need to worry. It happened. Uh, past is past. Uh, too much worry never help to reduce the problem. Too much worry is only increase our own mental sort of the unhappiness. So be realistic. Uh, what can be done? How much we can do? All right. We can do. Study, research, analyze, do it. Uh, meantime, you should know the Oops. limitations. Uh, then, uh, the, according to the fact, uh, once we saw the limitation, accepted that, no problem. So that's my main approach, main way of approach. So less worry, less sort of mental or city uh, uh, disturbances. Okay. So can I can I ask you can I ask you some more blunt questions? Oh yes. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. <laughs> you now have there are a certain number of critics oh. of your holiness yes. that say your approach, your non-violent, oh. non-confrontational approach over Tibet with the Chinese oh. has not borne sufficient fruit. Oh. It has not worked. Oh. Your critics oh, yes, say this. Yes. You're familiar with this. Yes. Yes, they have their own reasons. But if, if we ask them what else they can do, I think very little answer. I think more important, I feel, because of my way of approach, 
Firstly, strictly non-violence. Secondly, not seeking independence or separation. Uh, try to find uh, some mutually agreeable solution within the Chinese constitution. Now, because of this way of approach, more and more Chinese now showing their concern, their, their sort of what's it, this, uh, sense of solidarity. So this is, if we uh, follow more violent way or complete independence, I don't think we will get this much sort of support from Chinese community. In Hong Kong, in Hong Kong, they managed to get the one country, two systems mm. idea mm. from the Chinese. Why can you not, and why do you believe that you have been unable to get some form of compromise system for Tibet from China? Actually, I made it very clear. Uh, very often, the Tibet liberated not by gun. The Chinese themselves always say that. Tibet liberated by agreement, 17-point agreement. That agreement, if you read carefully, the spirit of one country, two system is very much alive there. So why can't you get that from them now? Why have they been able and willing to give it in Hong Kong and elsewhere, but but in 2006, it is not possible for you to negotiate some similar sort of deal. In early 80s, one of my delegation, when they have audience with some Chinese leaders in Peking, they mentioned we have more right uh, to, to make demand than Taiwan. Uh, then the answer uh, from the Chinese high official was uh, Tibet already liberated, Taiwan not yet liberated. So therefore, they have more right <laughs> to, to, to say some de more demands, uh, more right. So in any way, in any way, that's up to the Chinese government. But the, you know, I'm asking them on behalf of Tibetan people, we have unique uh, sort of, what's it, a cultural heritage and environment and spirituality. If you preserve these things, it's actually enrich culture of people's of China and also the pre careful preservation about ecology in Tibet, Tibet Plateau, is immense benefit for long run in China proper the water resources. So therefore, they, they should take special care about the Tibetan culture, about the Tibetan environment. For that reason, naturally, about Tibet, Tibet knows better Then they should have final authority. But your critics say, I'm sorry to come back oh, to yes, your critics okay, again. But okay. You'll forget. Okay. I always, always welcome criticism. Because we deliberately promote about democracy. But your critics say your way hasn't worked, sir. It hasn't succeeded. Mm -hmm. Firstly, we, be, we should be realistic. Our problem dealing with people's problem of China. <laughs> Huge country. Very big nation. Uh, economically, militarily, manpower, everything. Very big nation. Dealing with that, we need more patience. And we should know the limitation, I feel. So, as I mentioned briefly before, you see, uh, since seven, around 70, uh, 79, mm -hmm. And eventually, my middle way of approach become public. Then, including Tibetan youth organization, and also including my elder brother, you say, very much critical about my approach. 
Even my eldest brother did, told me, you sold Tibetan right. <laughs> the 14th Dalai Lama become traitor of Tibetan right. <laughs> okay, doesn't matter. Uh, so, so at that time, uh, some, some, some occasion, I asked, you see, some argument, some of the leader of youth organization. They have no sort of uh, systematic sort of plan or systematic sort of what's the program. Just much more emotionally. Of course, you see, we, whether you see Tibet is part of China or not, that's a historical or legal sort of issue. I always made clear, uh, this is not a political reason, a political decision. Right. Uh, history, up to historian, up to legal expert. I'm looking forward. In future, it's concerned, I'm not seeing independence. Because Tibet, landlocked country, materially backward, small population. Meantime, we also need material development. While I'm emphasizing the importance of inner spirituality, but at the same time, practical level, we need more modernization of Tibet. There, if Chinese provide us meaningful autonomy, then as far as economy progress is concerned, we will get much benefit if we remain within the people of China. Just so that's my approach, my reason. And many Tibetans understand that. Just a few more questions. Uh, there was a question on dreams, wasn't there? Uh, yes, I was doing a yeah. Yeah. Life One of my colleagues wants me to ask you, um, has a dream ever impacted are you okay has a dream ever impacted you in your life a decision that you have taken that no. you can think of no i think it is quite foolish <laughs> if you too much believe in dream now just a minute well what what, what do you mean dream you go to sleep you have a dream <laughs> dreams dream you cannot rely uh, Except some dreams, very clear and not just once, often repeated, then there might be some significance. But I never have that kind of dream. No. <laughs> so I never rely on dream. But you, you have a good night's sleep. Oh, yes. Eight hours, nine hours sleep. <laughs> you must be doing something right. Your Holiness, finally, um, if we could turn the clock back, if, imagine I can, yes. would you have, would you still have gone into exile when you did? Would you still have taken that decision? on that day to yes leave. no doubt no doubt oh i think afternoon of 17th uh, yes 17th uh, march 1959 as i think change of whole my life and to some extent change of tibetan tibetan sort of issue uh, i feel 100% correct no doubt. No doubt. Even some elder Tibetan. In early 60s, some of my officials, elder, showing occasionally a little doubt. But then, uh, uh, since mid 60s, pension, pension Lama dismissed. And then Cultural Revolution started. A lot of upheavals. Oh, then all these uh, high of, uh, elder officials who have little skeptical or little doubt about our decision, then all unanimously express, now that decision becomes right. Did you have any moment of doubt about naming the next Panjshin Lama? Did you have any moment of doubt 
bearing in mind mm. the consequences that could have, that did happen to him. Could you have kept that to yourself? Now, actually, my decision about Benjamin Lama, without anything about political thing, if I, to, I, I said it, I, I to take political consideration about choosing of reincarnation of Benjamin Lama, some of my friend asked me reincarnation of Benjamin, 10th Benjamin Lama should find outside China. But I don't care. I feel this is political. This is political mandate, political sort of view. Now, what we should do is sincere, traditional, spiritual way. Doesn't matter, Benjamin Lama, here outside or India. The consequences, though. Or, or in Tibet. So I took the decision entirely according to the traditional, spiritual way. Then some consequences happen, but in practical level, before that decision, several occasions I tried to communicate with Chinese government. But then, no clear answer. Meantime, many Tibetans urged me I should decide. Then there's no other choice. Historically, I have the responsibility. Therefore, Purely according to the spiritual, traditional way, I decided. Then some consequences happen. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I have no regret. Do you re I done my best. Do you regret anything, Your Holiness? This oh, no, no, no. no. Oh, just the other day, I met, oh, before I go, go to South India to perform some important ceremony, uh, I met some Tibetan groups here. So without uh, fully sort of precaution about cold or, or cold, cough, cough. So, so as a result, I got severe cough. So that is my regret, one of the regret. So that kind of regret uh, always happened. <laughs> but in serious matter, Almost none. Almost none. Of course, the, uh, I do feel some sort of resentment. Not our Chinese brothers and sisters, but mainly our previous generations, one generation or two generations, the late, the, I mean, the end of the 19th century, and then early 20th century, during those periods, I think the Tibetan concerned people, including high lamas, I think completely nailed it, out of ignorance uh, and also impractical. So, I, we not prepared. The one thing I can say, uh, my watch uh, is still working. Uh, I'm not going to let you repair my watch. Apparently... <laughs> Uh, that, that I think, if, no, I, no. Yeah, if I want to repair that, then I, I will hit it, <laughs> then, then I got the job. <laughs> no, keep away from my watch. Uh, thank you very much, Your Holiness. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was most interesting. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs>